is mercy. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Say it again, say, Lord, have mercy. Mercy! The Bible says in Genesis 39, 21, the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord showed him mercy, gave him favor in the sight of the Egyptian. Whenever mercy shows, favor flows. Mercy. There's a difference between forgiveness and mercy. Forgiveness is after an offense. Mercy is a constant reminder of the covenant. When you fall into sin, you say, God, forgive me. But anytime you say, Lord, have mercy, the blood of Jesus, Calvary is reintensified. When you say, when you say, Lord, have mercy, Jesus himself bodily shows up. That is why mercy is not a product of election or selection. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Romans 9, 15 and 16. Not of him that runneth, not of him that will it, but of God. Jesus walked through the, sh the shores of Jericho. And he saw a man come blind Bartimaeus. And the man cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Sir, every other person saw him as Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth was a mockery. Jesus was not from Nazareth. He was from Bethlehem. But they called him Jesus of Nazareth to mock him. Because nothing good comes out of Nazareth. They called him Jesus of Nazareth because Samson was the father of the Nazarene nation and he ended the reproach. Everybody said, Jesus of Nazareth. But me said, no, son of David. Your revelation of God is what determines your manifestations in life. A young man asked the father, said, how big is God? What is his size? How big? How big is God? And the father saw an aircraft and said, how big is that plane? The boy said, it's very small, I can barely see it. The father laughed. The next, the father took him to the airport. And the father showed him a plane. He said, how big is this plane? He said, it's very big. He said, that is how it is. The size of God is determined by how you see him. How close you are. Your proximity is what determines your revelation. If you are close to him, he's big. If you are far from him, he's small. Am I talking to somebody right now? If you are close, you see the mightiness of God. You see the... the <laughs> the oyikiyikiness of God. Why? Mercy. When mercy shows up, laws are suspended. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus told those that rebuked him to call him. When mercy shows up, your enemies become your messengers. somebody say mercy say mercy you can't describe mercy mercy keeps back what you deserve and gives you what God reserves mercy when mercy shows up even your errors are explained away mercy sir there are some of the most terrible people who have wonderful marriages and there are some of the most decent people who have scattered homes. Don't mock those who have challenges in their homes. Some of them are character sound, but there's an altar crying against them. It becomes an anomaly when we have this, this selectivity, this mental rejection. You see people having marital crisis, you look them less. No! There are some of them character sound, love God, fears God, but there's an altar that's crying against them. There's a force that is contending. Some, some are going through all kinds of battles in life because something from their home. A young lady who was from the other religion suddenly became a Christian. She came to church for the first time and at the end of the service, she wanted to see me. So the protocol said, when, when did you come? He said, I started today. He said, you started today, you want to see him today? He said, yes, it doesn't work like that here. <laughs> You'll be coming for some time join the workers department and all that because we actually have a very small church so it doesn't very small so <laughs> it takes a lot of time and the 
young lady finally joined the usher department, came to see me. So that day she, she comes. I look at her. I said, okay, why are you here? He said she's had babies nine times. Dead. Still bed, still bed, still bed, still bed. Do you know what it takes to carry a baby for nine months? And you've carried the baby for nine months, nine times. And while she was talking, the Lord said, tell her to go home and see her father. I said, you are going to buy a gift. See, I don't have money. I said, take, take money. What does your father like? She told me. I said, buy it in abundance. Give to him and just tell him you are sorry. He said, ah, I didn't do anything. I said, are you, who is the pastor here? I'm giving you a zone. You know, there are people, this logic, this logic. I said, go home. He said, but sir, to God, to God. I didn't do anything. I said, go home. She went there, dropped the gift. The father said, oh, welcome. He said, daddy, anything I did to you, I'm sorry. The father took a deep breath. Hmm. He said, when you were 14 years, I cursed you. You took sides with your mother against me. So I cursed you that you will never be able to have a child. He said, all oh, that has been happening to you, I know. And the lady said, so Pastor Sulema said the truth. She ran back to me. He said, look at me. I said, it's okay. As he prayed for you, he said, I said, now you get pregnant. Now let me tell you something. Hold on. She got pregnant. Hold on. Sir, this is different from your theology. When we are addressing altars, there are some things we handle by prayers. There are some we handle by correcting things. Uh, uh. You broke a lady's heart. Now you have no child in your marriage. Look for her and make peace. Forget what is your prayer. Leave prayer. Don't stress yourself. Look for that person and mend fences. Oh Lord. You may have watched a service online in our church where I was ministering and a girl cried out and said, our brother is dying. Our brother is dying. They didn't know the brother was already dead. The mother was in church. They didn't want the mother to know. Our brother is dying. Our brother is dying. One just died and another was in the hospital dying. So I said, come and allow them talk. She whispered. She said, my mom is here. Don't tell her. He's already dead. And me, my, my mouth. I said, he's, he's, already, he's already dead. She heard it. He said, eh? 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 I said, no, mommy. No, no, no not, not really. Um, wait. And another person who had a hand in that thing was an usher in the church. You may have seen the meeting. I said, this is a family matter. We shall not discuss it in public. And the lady, hold on. So the Lord said, call them to your office. They came to my office. The other family came. And now, this is it. Their both fathers have the same father. So they were cousins. And the one who was attacking, the father had the land. And this other one's father took this father's land. And the girl took her name to a shrine. That you will bring that land. Or one, one, one. I'll take everybody. We sat down. I laid hands. I said, nobody will die. The Lord said, shut up. To subvert a man from his cause. The Lord approved not. You are rebuking when they took a man's land. Let them refund it. Here. I said, Lord, you are teaching me something new. He said, let them. So I told them, I said, something will happen. I was talking to them and I told the guy, I said, your father is going to appear to you this night. He said, eh. I said, tell your father, I said, what does he want? The guy went back, the father appeared, the father said, 10 million, one dime will not be out. 10 million. So I told the girl, I said, not just 10 million. There was a room your father was staying, the room is bad. I said, I will fix it. I will fix it. I will make things okay. And I'll give it them. As the money was paid, the room was fixed. The person that was already attacked again stood up from the hospital bed. And the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? I thought altars are only handled by prayer. The Lord said, No. There are people that are bruised. There are people whose hearts are hurting. And they are, they are still alive. You are aware of what you did to them. And you are busy praying. You, you, you got hooked to somebody. She spent everything she had. She gave her emotion. Gave her time. Gave everything. And went open for marriage. She had opportunities that, that was waved off. And now that you, 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 you are supposed to get married to her, you bring somebody else. And now your home is in crisis. You are praying. What prayer are you praying? What prayer?
prayer are you praying? There are some of you that need to make peace. Men fences. There are people you have offended that you need to tell, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And there are many of you, there are ministers who have labored over your life. Prayed, stood with you in times of crisis. But how did you pay them? How? You are pastoring somebody. The person has seen you in his revelations. I've seen God manifest through you. I've seen the hand of God on his life through you. And now he's still asking if you're a man of God or not. Something is wrong with your family tree. When the mercy of God shows up, it commands favor. It communicates favor. I don't know what has overwhelmed you, but I decree on common attraction on common release of mercy on common download of mercy let mercy show up let mercy show up over the matters of your marriage the matters of your finances the matters of your business i don't know who you are but receive mercy i don't know who you are but receive mercy somebody shot fire somebody shot fire Fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Number three, and then I'm going to pray. Oh. I'm going to pray. Somebody shout, Lord, have mercy. Do you know <laughs> when God was talking to David in 2 Samuel 7 15? Listen to this. He said, David, concerning your son Solomon, I will not take mercy from him like I took it from Saul. So Saul became a shipwreck because of the withdrawal of mercy. He said, I will not take... Look at Solomon. What kind of guy was that? 700 wives, 300 porcupines. <laughs> 1,000. That was a faculty of love and department of romance. A full institution. 1,000. Solomon didn't know all his children. Just imagine him walking in the garden one time. He saw a young man. Good morning, Dad. Who is your mother? <laughs> they don't call the wives by name. They call them by code. Hannah 202. Because there could be several Hannahs amongst 1,000 women. <laughs> but yet the man was enjoying a level of acceptance. Solomon was so blessed. I did them. I, I preached. I ministered somewhere. Uh, I, I did a series on Solomon too much money that was the title of the message too much money you can go and watch it too much money and I x-rayed his life this man was so blessed so blessed so wealthy why mercy even if you hate money and you are in this meeting you are financially implicated <laughs> Even if you hate financial breakthrough, oh. for stepping into this atmosphere, money will pursue and overtake you. Oh, yeah. You become a carrier of wealth. A carrier of wealth. A carrier of wealth. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh. Take your seat. Let me round up. Number three. Oh. The third trigger of favor is light. Somebody say light. Illumination. Rejection is darkness. Acceptance is light. 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 In Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, Light excelled darkness as wisdom excelled folly. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 7, Truly light is sweet, for it's a good thing for the eyes to be on the sun. Light. Light. John 1 from verse 4, in him was light. And the light was the life of men. The light shineth in darkness. 
darkness cannot light it is the light you contact that lightens your environment psalm 36 verse 9 for in thy light with thee O lord is the fountain of life for in thy light shall we see light Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 he sent a word unto Jacob and it lightened upon Israel light your light determines your height your light determines your flight to be heavily lighted is to be set on the journey you only contact light from God's word Jesus is the word John 8 verse 12 he says I am the light of the world for he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life your addiction to God's word determines your addition in this world if you are not worded you are not rotted and if you are not rotted you are not a commander of signs take this rod in thy hand do signs do wonders so your ability to communicate signs is your direct connectivity to the rod i've read the bible genesis through revelation 46 times and i'm still on it now your addiction someone <laughs> someone said apostle i know you're a very good man i said i don't think so tell me what you want to say he said tell me what you do prayer study i said you won't like it he said tell me i said five hours in prayers 20 chapters daily he said thank you sir <laughs> nobody has time people create time your priority determines your prosperity what you are addicted to is what determines what is added to you any believers who can quote scriptures in tandem with his age is an irresponsible believer Am I talking to somebody here? I have seen people in the other religion sit down to argue scriptures. When they are quoting scriptures, you are wondering if they are pastors. A man I'm told me he has read King James' message and Good News Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So we are, we are, not, we are not discussing the context of scriptures. We are discussing the context of versions. And you are there. In the time of crisis, you don't even have a, a scripture that has a semblance. They're about to fire from a place of work. Somebody's sitting on your promotion. And what are you quoting? Father, you say marriage is honorable with bed on the fire. What is the correct? What's the correlation? A pastor was praying with me one time. We were addressing an issue. All the scriptures he was quoting, I knew that prayer was going nowhere. Nowhere. There was an issue in the church. This guy was talking of Gog and Magog. Revelation. Lord, you said there shall be a war of Armageddon where there shall be Gog and Magog. I say, hey, ta, 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 ta. <laughs> the word. Hey, Colossians 3 16. Let the word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit of the joints and marrows. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Acts 19 verse 20. So grew mightily the word of God and prevail. Acts 20 32. I commend you to God and the word of his grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the bible says in ecclesiastes 8 4 we are the word of a king is there is power who can say what do i thou isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8 the grass withered the flower faded but the word of our god abided 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 forever there is power in the word of god the bible says in job 23 verse 12 i have esteemed the word from your mouth than my necessary food there is power in the word of God. They sent some soldiers to arrest Jesus. When Jesus was preaching, the soldiers came. They came to arrest him, but the word from his mouth arrested them. When they returned back, 
they asked him why could you not arrest this man john 7 49 he said never a man speak like this there's somebody power in the word say power in the word say power in the word go for the word of god he said we have tried all night and caught nothing but nevertheless when you study the word nevertheless you will never be the less despite your situation despite your condition you are addicted to the world when you study the world nevertheless you will never be the less i decree the appetite for the world the appetite for prayer the hunger for the world that you enjoy the life of god the appetite for the world the passion for revelation the passion for information be upstanding everybody oh be upstanding araba shata commandes there are things I've passed through that people are not even aware. I went to a quiet place to pray. This world is wicked. You see, when you enter the church, put on your spiritual antenna. Because there's every consciousness or possibility that you will let down your guards because you think you are with brethren. Right. Why I stopped going to places to pray? I turned my room to my mountain. It's because of what I passed through. I went somewhere to go and pray. I was praying. I saw some other pastors also praying there. So I was praying. I was on my third day when some people knocked on the door. I opened the door. I saw arms. Nobody knew I was praying there except two pastors. I saw arms. They said, just come out and follow us. I said, I'm coming. Let me take my Bible. They said, no problem. So I followed them. I was about taking my bag. They said, you can't take your bag. Enter the car. Armed. About three cars. I sat in one of the car. One guy sat here. Another sat here. And we are going to. I just put my back, rest my head on the, on the seat. So one of them pulled over. He said, what's your name? And I told him. He looked at the picture. Say, yeah, you're the one. He said, how come you're not scared? He said, because everybody we ever killed like this, either they pee on their pants, they are shaking. I said, because you can't kill me. You can't kill me. He said, why, why will I be scared? He said, ah. He said, do you see what you are holding? I said, forget what you are holding. Do you know what I'm holding? <laughs> you can't kill me. Who are you? I said, I'm a man of God. The leader is from Congo. Brazzaville. So he said, man, his English wasn't straight, man, man of God. What is man of God? I know man, I know God. Which is man of God? As a man of God means I'm a servant of God. Said, okay, 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 okay. What is your, your name is? I said, I'm Apostle Suleiman. He said, okay. Johnson? Say yes. Johnson? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He pulled over. I said, what? He started describing a meeting I had in Kenya. I said, yes. He described a woman that was hit of cancer. I said, yeah. Say that was his mother. I said, I don't know. And he brought a picture of a pastor. He said, do you know him? He's the guy we are praying together. So if, so if you see me directly connected, it's because I've seen things that shocked me. We expect the devil to come as the devil. He will come quoting scriptures. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know what the Bible says? That if the days were not shortened, even the elect will be deceived. I said, I know him. He said, okay. Okay. He said, I've never, his English was not straight. They gave him job and I didn't do it. He opened the drawer, showed me what. You see, when you know when you when you know how far people can go to take you out you will you will serve god without reserve envy is a cancer it goes everywhere crowd is prophesying um did i call myself
So it's a, sometimes if you, if you wonder, the things people are envious of you about are things you didn't create yourself. When the Lord called me, seven things God told me, one of them was an assurance and gave me. He said, nobody can stop you. So when I see people trying noise, I say, go and sleep. It's a covenant. So long you do this and this and this. And I'm doing it. He said, I am with you. Get to that point where, where you understand from his word. You, con you conduct light. Light from this word. You conduct light. We're going to preach in Moscow. The turbulence was crazy. The, the aircraft turned. Some musicians with their earrings and nose rings, their dreads. I was shocked to be hearing Jesus from their mouth. Jesus. Boy, I thought I saw Apostle Suleiman in this plane. Boy, Pastor, what is happening? Boy, I'm not the pilot. <laughs> I'm not the pilot. But I was relaxed. Why? He told me. He said, as you go to Moscow, before I left, he said, I will do great signs, great wonders. He said, I will bring people from prison. I will heal cancers. That's what he told me he would do in Moscow. If he said I will get to Moscow, I can't die. So while they were doing what they were doing, I just reclined my seat and slept off. I just slept off. I was relaxed because he has spoken. So the word of God is that pillar. It's your fortitude. It's your defense. Am I speaking here? So no matter the intents and purposes of the kingdoms of darkness, locate light, locate revelation, and you get that from the word of God. The more light you connect, the more favor you attract. I decree that the garments of this favor that the enemy has placed on you, maternal, paternal, generational, that garment of this favor is torn. 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 <laughs> We're going to pray. Please. And I want you to repeat these words after me. Every association. Listen to this. There are people that God needs to exit out of your life. No matter how emotionally connected you are to them. Show them the way, Lord. Out. Sir, there's no friendship that is neutral. If it's not an addition, it's a subtraction. You can't be indifferent. Anyone in my life wired to cause me pain, Lord, send them out. Wired to cause me pain, Lord, send them out. And I want you to pray this prayer. Call the names of the members of your family. Your brother, call his name, your sister, that anyone in their life, because the ungodly association they get themselves into can reflect on you. Yeah. Someone can enter your brother's life, and that entrance becomes a crisis in the family. A crisis. A crisis. She enters the brother's life. And he gives him all the reasons why he should not relate with you anymore. Disconnect him. One of my cousins was getting married. Good guy. I love him so much. He brought a girl. And she seemed wonderful. So I told her, I said, you see, um, at this one of my favorite cousins. I love him. The day you try anything, I will kill you. I shall kill you in prayers. If your agenda is to cause division, Satan hates a united front. Hates a united front. Anyone in my life, why are to cause me pain? Father, send them out. 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 Anyone in my life, why are to cause me pain? Send them out. Lord, 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 Lord. 